YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back on Total War Rome 2. I'm going to be bringing you some more online action. This time it's going to be uh, Aravachi versus Aravern... Ar Aravernie? <laughs> Aravachi versus Arverni. Um, the Arvachi are definitely the underdog faction here. Some of you have asked me which factions are good in Total War as of this patch, which I'm going to hop out here and adjust my sound just a little bit because I turned my mic down a little to see if we could cut the uh, feedback. So I'm going to cut the game sound down a little and hopefully it all balances out just fine. So yeah, uh, Arvachi, why are, th why are they lesser than the Arverni? I'll explain the stats later, but really what it comes down to is uh, mid-tier swords. And really, that's what a lot of Rome 2 comes down to, is mid-tier uh, mid swords. Well, what's that area? Well, that means kind of middle-of-the-ground swords. Not the real cheap ones, not the real expensive ones. Um, they make a huge difference. So, my army is three noble fighters, six Scutari swordsmen. Um, I've got four Celt-Iberian cav, two on each flank, and six Iberian spearmen, two on each flank, two in the center. Uh, I know that if the Arverni came decked out, they would have access to Levy Freeman. Uh, or otherwise known as MLG Freeman, uh, Oath Sworn, uh, Chosen Swordsmen, Celtic Warriors, the whole lot. So Arverni are a pretty good faction. Uh, where they are weak is skirmishing, but as far as pound for pound sword power goes, they are a pretty nice faction. Uh, my opponent, though, brought a very odd army. Two Spear Nobles versus the Arvachi, which are kind of a cavalry weak faction, is very questionable, and a Chosen Spearman. And then he's also got like some other Levy Freeman hitting around out and about. He's only got this one heavy horse that I can see. His army is strewn about a little bit odd, and that makes me think that this player is probably new. I don't know for sure. Anyway, what I'm doing here is just using my cheap Iberian Spearman to blunt the charge of the Arverni. Um, against my Scutari, the uh, Arverni charge would be superior. My Noble Fighters have a superior charge to the Oathsworn, but the Oathsworn have Shield Wall and uh, superior weapon damage. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm just pinning the expensive Arverni units down and then engaging them with my Scutari Swordsman. And then getting my Noble Fighters in here to help gang up on this Oathsworn. So I want to go two on one on the Oathsworn. Uh, which quickly dispatched my Spearman, but as you can see now it gets no charge bonus whatsoever. Which is kind of my plan. I've got a Noble Fighter here that's going to come engage the uh, the other Noble Spearman. And then I'm going to do the same out here. Use my Spearman to just you make sure the Oathsworn can't charge my Scutari. My opponent goes all in here with Heavy Horse against this uh, Scutari, uh, but he goes through his own Noble Spearman. Very odd choice here, him not trying to get around my flank. And then my Noble Fighter General is just going to come in here and pile in and make sure to cut down the Arverni from this flank. So my opponent making several tactical errors as well as some army selection errors. He's still got an Oathsworn back here in the back, and there's a couple of Chosen Swordsmen on this flank. Uh, he let his Levy Freeman take the charge of my Scutari, and um, that was probably not a good plan for him. He's being outflanked by my Iberian Spearman, not a huge threat in and of itself. Uh, it's just that getting outflanked will eventually take away your options. You can see I'm using my cavalry for uh, just kind of nuisance runs on his back line and forcing my opponent to react. You can see I do have a complete surround at this point. So I'm going to use the Scutari Spearman, or Iberian Spearman, to get a, a rear charge in the Oathsworn. It won't do much, it's just more of a morale thing. These Oathsworn are actually losing to my uh, my Scutari. Uh, most of their kills came from Spearmen that I was after earlier. I'm going to try and get in here and get some of the enemy skirmishers, but I'm going to take a jab volley from that Oathsworn, so I kind of get caught in between a, <laughs> a rock and a hard place here between the Oathsworn and the Chosen Swordsman, so I'm going to have to get out of there. Over here, my Scutari are cutting through the uh, the MLG Freeman with ease, and then these Chosen Swordsmen fail to get a charge, so my Scutari are going to do very well there also. They are racking up kills tremendously. You can see that the Chosen Swordsmen would win the charge. They also have, um, I believe they have, yeah, they have 15 armor on their side and slightly better defense. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the main line here is not looking real good for the Arverni because he didn't get any charges. My Scutari are being pretty cost effective considering what they're fighting against because the Arverni did not get charges. So like right here, this Scutari is going head to head with uh, an Oathsworn and it's doing very well. The Oathsworn is outflanked by a cheap Spearman which is hurting them some. But uh, again, just because this thing didn't get a charge, my Scutari are able to do much better than they otherwise would. Uh, and then over here where there's a gang up, uh, the spears are getting eaten alive. Um, and then here in the center, my noble fighters have broken through. Uh, back here, I'm kind of ping-ponging back and forth on this Oathsworn just to keep it from being able to join the fight. My Celt-Iberian Cav are causing very little damage. They're only medium cavalry, I believe. 
And so I'm just kind of getting a charge here and there. Celtiberian Cav are pretty neat Cav. They're not particularly great, but they're not bad for their price. Uh, a little weak to missiles and um, not real armored or anything, but again, just using them for something like this where I'm kind of going back and forth on the Sothsworn, just keeping it pinned in place and making it take a few losses. It's nothing much, um, but uh, it's worth it for me. My other Celtiberian Cav now is able to catch up with the Arverni Skirmishers and dispatch them. There were some Gallic Hunters, and then otherwise, trying to see, got some uh, no uh, Spear Nobles that are engaged here, some of my Swordsmen, and a Chosen Swordsman as well, and just got some Skitari who actually finished mopping up over here. You can see some uh, some Chosen Swords trying to hold out over here. They're surrounded by Scu uh, Iberian Spearmen and Skutari. See here, yeah. Arverni casually walking off the field now that the fighting's done. <laughs> like, it's alright, boys. Game over. Just walk it off. Um, yeah, anyway. So let's see, uh, what all we got left? So we just got um, Oathsworn and Chosen Swordsman at this point, so it ought to be a pretty easy knockout. Uh, some of you might be like, Eh, this, this guy was pretty new, he didn't pose much of a challenge. So there's a lot of new players on Rome 2. For whatever reason, there's a lot of people just now getting into Rome 2. Um, and so I'm going to give you some advice as soon as the battle's over. We'll watch my troops uh, take on these uh, Osworn and Chosen Swordsmen. My opponent here is kind of going to be caught in an unwinnable position. Noble fighters typically would not do this well uh, against Osworn and some of the other units, but in this case I will. My opponent's going to go into Shield Wall, and that makes sense for him. I'm just going to get all my Noble fighters lined up. And here we go. We'll watch the charge. Now, my noble fighters will absolutely shred the chosen swordsman on the charge and in prolonged combat. Um, though the Osworn would be a tougher nut to crack, but Celt Iberian Cav uh, slamming a charge home here with the morale the way it is, it's going to be over pretty quick for the Osworn. You can see that the uh, the impact damage is pretty good, but it really just knocks a lot of Osworn over because the Celt Iberian Cav don't kill a particularly large amount on the charge. So there's the uh, the afterwards stats for me. So you can see the couple of the Oathsworn still got a lot of kills. Unfortunately for him, though, most of them were just Iberian Spearmen, so not particularly cost-effective. Let's talk about um, uh, factions real quick. So I'm going to give you all just real quick, for new players or players who are just curious, what are the big three factions right now? Um, I would probably call it, well, I say, this is just my own opinion, probably Rome. I don't really think it changed in patch 17. I'd call it Rome. Uh, Tillis and Bowie Eye. Um, those would be the, the factions that I would give the biggest edge to. Why? Well, for different reasons. Rome is mainly going to be good because its mid-tier infantry is, is the best, bar none. Um, and they have several options with it. Uh, these veteran legionaries are a great pick. At 850 talents, you get a whopping 59 attack, 85 armor, 60 health, and 65 base morale. That is really nice. Um, and then for a little bit more, you get the Evocati. It's two more attack, five more armor for 50, uh, 40 more talents, which is, you know, depends on whether you think that's worth it or not. Uh, armored Legionaries pack a pretty good wallop of an attack at a whopping 95 armor on those guys. Huge armor. Now, the Romans do not have the best melee defense, but their armor and attack uh, usually makes up for it. The Romans are not good on an open field charge against barbarian swordsmen that are high charge, but if you get these guys into terrain like forest or hills or other stuff, they are beastly. Um, very difficult to beat, and that's why I would say that Rome is, Rome is probably the strongest faction in the game. Um, I would rate them that way. Some may disagree with me. The Bowiei and uh, Tillis are not bad either. Let's take a look. Why are the Bowiei good? Mainly right here, sword followers. I wonder if these guys took a... They are heavy melee infantry still, which is good for them. Uh, this mass system plays in. The heavier a unit is, the more uh, impact damage it does on the charge. So... Sword followers, good price, solid charge, good melee attack and weapon damage, very nice armor, melee defense, shield wall. You know, the price is right, is kind of the deal with these guys. Oathsworn. Now, Oathsworn, um, I thought they got knocked down to a different mass, but apparently they did not. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different. No, no, that was a Swaby uh, Noble Swordsman, yeah. So these guys, um, very nice charge, uh, great weapon attack, melee damage, all that kind of stuff. Very. You know, very solid armor, very good melee defense, head hunt and shield wall, that's why these guys are good. The other thing that makes the Boyai so dangerous is the uh, Levy Freeman. These guys still have javelins, they're still very cheap, and they're still very effective at warding off horse archers, cavalry, 
um, absorbing charges, all that kind of stuff. They don't call these guys MLG Freeman for nothing. Now, the Bowie are a little bit weak when it comes to skirmishing. However, since they have this cheap Celtic Bowman, it does give them a little more option. And they've got the Celtic Slinger. Heavy Horse is a great mid-tier cavalry choice. It is, in fact, a heavy melee cav, so nice impact damage, great attack stats, nice charge bonus. Has frenzied charge, too, in case you need to increase the charge bonus. That's why the Bowie are good. Solid mid-tier sword infantry in the sword follower. Solid mid-tier heavy cav with the heavy horse. And a great uh, cost-effective... Uh, elite sword in the Oath Sworn. Now, Tylus. Why does Tylus make the list? That's going to be pretty obvious. It's going to be these tribal warriors. These guys do not have the best attack, but at a whopping 95 armor with shield wall and 70 melee defense, these guys can take a beating. And they still have a pretty good charge bonus. So again, the price is right when it comes to these guys. Throw in on top of that that Tylus is a little bit flexible in the sense that they could bring Thracian warriors as well, which have a really high charge. They have access to the Levy Freeman. Um, Skirmisher-wise, again, they're going to be pretty weak, but one of the units that I absolutely love for Tylus is these Raiding Horsemen. Decent attack and uh, damage stats and melee, uh, while carrying the Javelins and being very good at harassing heavy cavalry. You'll notice, though, that they do not have a mid-tier heavy cav, but these Raiding Horsemen are uh, pretty difficult to deal with sometimes uh, for enemies. So that's why I would say those factions are the top three. Um, as far as some of the worst factions in the game, just so that some of you all know, Pergamon is terrible. Um, trying to think of some others. Yeah, Pergamon is really in a league of their own. They are bad. They are really bad. Um, trying to think if any others hit the rock bottom. Ep Epirus is pretty hard to use. They're not the worst. Um, successor Kingdoms, you know, when it comes to the same skill player, they're going to die every time to those three factions that I told you. Um, so like Macedon, Seleucids, Egypt, Bactria... You name them, they're all going to die equally um, to the to the factions I named. So kind of middle of the road factions. Carthage is kind of middle of the road. Um, Lusitani can be middle of the road. Uh, just trying to think. Iceni is a pretty decent faction. Not great, but not bad. Uh, trying to think of some of the others that are out there that are pretty good. Arverni are one of those that... Well, Air, why are they not as good as the Bowie or the Tylus? It's mainly just because the Chosen Swordsmen aren't quite as good as the other mid-tier uh, infantry, but they're not bad. Um, pretty decent stats for what you get, so that's why the Arverni are pretty good. Um, I would say that they're not far behind the uh, the others. Anyway, just that's a quick rundown. I'll give you more information on more videos. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Hopefully that gives you a couple of tips. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.